Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Okay, in this video today, we are talking about impractical home decor. I haven't done one of these videos in a while and they are so much fun to do because basically what we're doing is we're talking about home decor furniture items that you see on social media and in the media in general that, you know, are presented as being really beautiful but have some practical implications that I want you all to be aware of. I'm not saying these are bad items. These items just have some issues around practicality that I think you should be aware of. And I'll also say I've done a bunch of these videos too. I have a playlist on my channel that I'm gonna link at the end of this video so you can go and take a look at that. If you like this video, you'll definitely love those. Now let's get going. Okay, first up is going to be wallpaper in the full bath. Okay, so what do I mean by that? I mean that wallpaper can be in bathrooms, but it really should be kept to powder rooms. Okay, because if you have a full bath where you have a shower or you have a tub, there's issues around moisture and humidity that oftentimes will make wallpaper peel or at least definitely will not last as long as it probably should. There's some real practical issues here with putting it in a full bath. And I was surprised when I started really looking into it, how many people have put wallpaper in their full bath. It's a risk. It's a risk and something that you should be aware of because it's all fun and games until the wallpaper starts peeling and coming down after you do it. Basically, the moisture and the humidity in the room can start to loosen the glue on the wallpaper and cause issues. It's possible that you'll be fine, but I would just say be very, very cautious about doing it. And honestly, there's better alternatives like tile or stone slabs, or of course, good old fashioned paint or even wall treatments that I think work really, really well on full bath. And they don't have the same practical issues that you're gonna get with wallpaper. Be very careful with wallpaper in a full bath. As I said, it's possible you can get away with it. I would really dive deep into those manufacturer instructions before you select a wallpaper because you want to make sure that it is going to be appropriate for the room that you're using it in. It's too much of a risk for me. So personally, I would say no to putting wallpaper in a full bath. Now in a powder room, go nuts. That is honestly one of my favorite things to see in a powder room. I just think a powder room is a small, intimate sort of cool little jewel box of a room when done right and can be super, super fun to do something really kooky and crazy. Some of my favorite rooms in homes are powder rooms. I think if you could have like five powder rooms, if I had five powder rooms, I'd be happy because that would be enough for me to do all the weird and kooky things that I want to do with powder rooms. So powder rooms, yes, have fun, enjoy, put all the wallpaper you up there, have a really good old time. But I would be very careful about doing it in a full bath personally. Okay, next up, and this, speaking of like things you see on social media, this screams social media, and that is color blocked books. Have you guys seen this trend where you see, oh, I've seen it all the time. Basically, instead of putting your books in alphabetical order, if you're that type of person, I'm not, or just haphazard where you just kind of throw things on the shelf and who, who really cares? That's more me. If you're not those types of people, but maybe you want to do something really kind of cool and a little bit trendy and interesting, you'll color block your books. I have to be careful. My friend Carolyn has this in her house. Sorry, Carolyn, if you see this. But the main thing here is that instead of dividing them up in alphabetical order, as I said, or whatever, having no rhyme or reason, you color block them. So you put everything with the spine in orange together, and then you do yellow, and then you do green and blue, and you don't need me to do the whole rainbow to get it. Basically, you color block so that all like-minded colors are in the same spot. If you are a reader, then I think this should bother you on like just the practical, isn't it obvious? Like how are you supposed to find everything? What are you gonna do, right? Like, are you really going to have, what if you've got a series where they all have different colored spines because that's typical when you're doing a series. How are you gonna find them all because they're all gonna be in different places all over your bookshelf? Like there's no rhyme or reason to it, which to be fair, my haphazard way is also easy or hard to find, but yours is intentionally, you're intentionally making it hard to find like that. Oh, I don't like this one. I get that it's aesthetically like cute to have a rainbow. It, you know, it's just, it's clearly made for Instagram. It's made for the aesthetics. I don't know. I just think books, let's not overthink it. You know, books are timeless. They're beautiful. They've been around for a long, long time. You're fine with putting them on a shelf. So again, if you love this and you're really happy with the kind of aesthetic uh, of the colored block books and you're, you don't mind that it's clearly impractical, then, you know, you just go out at it and have fun and post it on social media. We'll all ooh and ah in your Instagram stories. Me, personally, ooh, this one isn't really for me because I just think if you actually want to read books, stick to the practical. It was nothing, there was nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with just putting books on a shelf. Like there was nothing wrong with that. So I don't really, I feel like we're just kind of making something aesthetically pleasing and cool for really no good reason. And I will also say honorable mention is turning the spine around and now you can just see all like the beige pages. This is even less 
functional than the colored block because at least then you can go, I think that book is purple. Now you have no idea what any of your books are. You're just hoping and praying, sitting there, pulling around, trying to find your books. Like, I just don't have time for that. And I will say really where this came from, I think is like movies and TV shows because you know how if you're watching a TV show, I don't know, like Modern Family or something and they're like, you know, they won't show books or they won't show the Apple sticker on the back. And the reason they do that is because they don't want to have to go get the rights from like Scholastic or like John Clancy or like JK Rowling or whatever. They don't want to have to do that. So instead they just turn the spines in so that it's just the pages. That's why they do it. And I think people saw that and thought, oh, that's cool and really neutral and monochromatic and aesthetic. So why don't I just turn all my books around? I say no, stick to your books as is, I'm over it. But again, if you love it and you think it's aesthetically cool, then you just go nuts. Just know that it's completely impractical and um, I'm not here for it. Okay, next up is gonna be a tea bar drawer pulls in the kitchen or the bathroom, but really looking at the kitchen here. So this is any sort of drawer pull that has the really like elongated side here. So. This, first of all, shout out to Julie Koo, love you. She's a YouTuber here on the platform. And she highlights this as a mistake that she made in her own home. And so she drew a lot of attention to it. And I'm just piggybacking on that, I'm not gonna lie. So thank you, Julie, for pointing this out because I never thought of this, but she's absolutely right. These drawer pulls in the kitchen, they look cute, they look really beautiful. But something to keep in mind is that when you're actually cooking in your kitchen, if you use your kitchen, which I understand not everybody does. Didn't Carrie Bradshaw use her oven for storage? Anyway, you know, some people use their kitchen like I do. I actually like to cook. So this feels a little bit like a nightmare because as you're moving throughout the kitchen, especially if you have loose clothing, it is a recipe for getting holes in all of your shirts because these little T-bars, as you pull on them, they're gonna pull in just the right way to rip a giant hole in all of your tops, which I am not a fan of. So this is something that looks really cool, but when you actually think it through and you realize that your kitchen needs to be functional and you need to sort of move throughout, you're constantly moving and you're not really thinking about your drawer pulls because you're cooking. So for me, these pulls are not okay. These are the types of pulls that are going to ruin all of your shirts and that's not a good thing. I would choose a pull that has sort of a closed handle and there's really no opportunity for things to catch on them. That's gonna be really important for me. I have the Trinity pull from MTech. It's nice, it's cute, it's basic, it's minimal, it does the job. I have them in black in my kitchen. I have them in brass over in my walk-in closet on my Pax wardrobe. I love these drawer pulls. I think they're super cute. You can buy them on Amazon, love these ones. And again, there's no opportunity for clothing to get caught on them as you're moving over the kitchen, which to me is way more practical because honestly, I think these drawer pulls that Julie has I'm sorry, but those would drive me nuts. I would literally, I could see me doing my whole kitchen, ruining one of my sweaters, and then, yeah, I would definitely be changing out all those drawer pulls pretty quick. So don't make that mistake. Buy ones that have a closed handle, way more practical. Okay, next up, another Instagram fave is going to be, like, is it? Pampas grass or pompous grass? I don't know, it's pompous, I'll tell you that. But anyway, the pampas grass or whatever, that trend, which is everywhere, right? Like we've seen the dried flowers have been really popular for a while, but in light of the course, the really beige, minimal, kind of white aesthetic that has been very popular for a while here, this became sort of the dried flower of choice and sort of, you know how I feel about the plant and the flower trends. I'm usually not a big fan because I just think plants and flowers are timeless and you really don't need to overthink these things things. That's my own personal opinion. But this became sort of the trendy weed. Is this a weed? I don't really know what this is, but the dried flower, we're going to be generous and call them dried flower of choice. It's not a flower, but okay. So what is the practical issue here? This thing looks like I'm going to sneeze just looking at the photos. You know, I am like, I don't even think I really have allergies. Do I? Well, and I don't think I really have allergies. I think you would know if, I think I'd know if I, if I had them, right? Anyway, I don't have them, but this just looks like sneezes in your living room. You know what I mean? This just, and think of your guests. They're gonna come in, this like this has to be an issue in terms of allergies. This has to be one of the top allergies that anybody has in their home. I have heard so many stories of people that they go hunting on the side of the road for this stuff, because that's where you find it, right? You can buy it, or you can just literally probably find it near a highway near you, and trim all this little pompous grass, bring that home, and then uh, people realize that they have allergies to pompous grass. And yeah, I mean, that, that feels obvious to me, but people have just found that out the hard way, and and I would just, you know, if not for yourself, maybe think of other family members and think of your guests and maybe skip this one. Now, again, if you love it and it's cool and it's like a little bit of, like I always say plants bring life into the home. I'm not really sure these are bringing life into your home, but okay. If, if you're bringing this into your home and it's, 
natural. So we love that. So it's a natural, I guess, material that you're bringing in and it's neutral. So that's cool. So it matches the rest of your beige aesthetic in your space. Cool, cool, cool. Just think about the sneezing and think about the allergy issues that might happen for your family and your guests before you bring this in. Just, just think twice is all I'm saying before you bring this in. It's cute. I get, I get, I, I understand the aesthetic appeal. I know it looks good on Instagram. But maybe just think twice, if just for the allergies. Oh, and the like dust, wouldn't that like pollen? Like this has got to flake off, it'd be all over your floor. I don't know, it's, it's a miss for me. Okay, next up on my list is going to be glass shower doors that overlap. Ooh, those sliding doors. Okay, this is a hard one because I there's not a ton of alternatives that are really good. You just have to be really careful. Really taking into account, if you're buying a slide mechanism, really dive deep and look in when you're shopping, whether it's online through Wayfair or whatever, or even like in person at like a Home Depot or something. I would really look at how much overlap there is going to be between the two sliding pieces of glass. Cause some of them have really huge gaps. That is very, very difficult to clean. And although, you know, you guys, I'm not always a big like dismissing things out of hand because they're difficult to clean. For me, I always like to take a look and think, you know, is the juice worth the squeeze when it comes to cleaning? Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But with these big overlaps in the shower, where it's which is an area that you should be regularly cleaning, <laughs> despite what some might think, it's not a self-cleaning area of the home. It does require its own cleaning. I'd be very careful of that overlap because you do not want a gap that is really, really annoying and difficult to clean. If you have the space, I personally do not. Having one with a hinge, so if you have a larger bathroom, that might make a lot of sense. That's super easy to clean. You can wipe down that glass, no problem inside and out. If you are forced into using one of these slide mechanisms, it's not necessarily a huge problem. I would just be very careful to look at ones that have an appropriate amount of gap so that water doesn't splash through, but not so much of an overlap that it becomes really cumbersome and really difficult to actually get your hand in there and clean it properly. So I don't know why when they manufacture these things, they don't think of that, but you should because you're the one who actually has to clean it every day, week at least a week. Okay, so I have two other picks that I'm actually gonna be putting on my Patreon. So the Patreon people, as a lovely thank you, they're actually getting two extra picks from me, which I'm gonna be making this video a little bit longer over there. And I'm gonna be sharing a couple other impractical items. But thank you all for joining me today on YouTube. If you'd like to join the Patreon, of course you can. The link is in the description. I do lives there sometimes. I answer all people's questions that they have around design. And also sometimes they get bonus uh, picks for different videos that I do. So thank you all for joining me in this video. As I said, the playlist for other impractical items is linked right here. Go check out that and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye.